Hi everybody! In this video I am going to teach you how to draw properly in 3D. This can be a bit confusing for beginners, so I want to make this tutorial as simple as possible. Ah, and don't forget to switch to 3D modeling, that's the workspace that I will be using during this tutorial. Let's start! To draw properly in 3D, there are some important tips that you should have in mind. First, we often need to change our viewpoint in this control. Second, we have to play a lot with the UCS icon. It indicates the direction of the coordinates and the current XY plane. I am going to show to you how we draw lines in a 3D view. As you can see, by default, they are placed on the XY plane. Now, I am holding the mouse wheel and the button shift to move the workspace so you can have a better perception. Another thing I recommend is to always have the grid on. Another thing I recommend is to always have the grid on because it helps us to not get lost as its position represents the XY plane. However, the line could also be on the Z axis if I follow the polar tracking like here. Now let's talk about the coordinate system. The UCS here is in the original position when I created this file and this means it is at the word coordinate system, WCS. And this tab on the coordinates panel is set on word. Let's move now the UCS to another position. For example here. Now the tab says unnamed and the Cartesian point 000, 000 change it to this place. To restore the original UCS position, click on the tab and select Word again. Now I am going to click on this control to select different viewpoints. I choose for example Southwest Isometric. The workspace rotates together with the UCS to the isometric position indicated by the view cube. If you don't know, in geometry, an isometric projection is a view when the X, Y and Z axis have an angle of 120 degrees between them. In this menu, apart from the isometric 3D views, there are six standard orthographic views. Top, button, left, right, front and back. They are indicated by the view cube. I'm going to show you briefly how this works. If I click on left, the workspace shows the left plane. Instead, if I click on right, it's the plane on the hidden face, the UCS rotates in the other direction. On the other hand, for the orthographic views, the UCS is readjusted to have the standard XY axis and in the tab, named UCS Combo Control, shows right. Let's move the workspace using the mouse wheel and shift the button. And you can notice that UCS rotated differently. To use the WCS, I change here to Word. Now it's on the original position. In this example, I'm going to show you how to draw objects on the face of a solid. I'm going to move the UCS coordinates to this corner, placing it on this end point. Then, the face where I want to draw things has to be on the XY plane. For that, I can click on the Y axis and rotate it to a vertical position. I click in this endpoint as I want the axis in this direction. Now you can see here the XY plane. Then I have to draw a line at the distance of 150 from the endpoint. Hoof the pointer there. 
move to the right, type that value and press enter. Then draw a vertical line here with length 100. Finally, I can easily draw the square from this endpoint. It has a side measure of 100 and at the end I can erase the support line. Important tip for drawing on faces. Now we are at the word view style. I am going to draw a circle here and you can see this face turning blue. If I draw at this moment the circle is going to be on the face and you can also see that the UCS rearranged it automatically. In fact this happened because I have the dynamic UCS turned on. That icon if it's not on the status bar you can find it here. In this list I can add and remove icons from the bar by ticking them. However it doesn't mean these features are switched on or off. That's important to have in mind. I click on the dynamic UCS and it's going to appear here and it's switched on. Now I'm going to click to deactivate it then I try to draw on the face and as you see it's not becoming highlighted anymore. The UCS is not changing and the objects I draw go to the XY plane. So turn on or off the dynamic UCS according to your needs. Let's draw basic 3D objects. I am going to use viewports in the model space. For that I can go to the visualize tab and click on viewport configuration. I choose this option for right. In the main one I will be drawing the objects with 3D perspective. The small windows will be orthographic views, top, left and right. Now I am going to introduce the solid primitives. These are basic 3D objects and they are located here in the home tab. Despite they might not be very useful themselves alone, as most of our drawings won't be exactly those solids, I am going to draw some of them. It's very simple. I start with the box. I click on the icon, choose a start point, then I have to define the width and the length of the rectangle. For example, I type 100 for this dimension, then I insert a value for the other, again 100. So it's going to be a square. Finally, I need the height. I am going to type 120. Now pay attention how the solid is projected on the orthographic viewports. This time I'm going to draw a cylinder. The first part I draw it as a circle. Then I insert the height of the cylinder. The cone is the same process. Then I need the height but this time I'm going down with the pointer and you can notice that the solid will be inverted. I type the value for the height and press enter. Now I encourage you to look at the projection in this viewport. It seems strange. However, if I rotate the main viewport to the left side you can understand this. The remaining solid primitives you can explore by yourself. For now let's continue to the next topic. Extrude and press pull objects. Basically these two commands allow us to add a third dimension to 2D objects. With extrude we can convert objects either to a surface or to a solid. That depends on its nature. If we extrude lines, open polylines or splines, we add a dimension on the z-axis, converting them to a surface, as you can see. 
By the way, if we do the same process to a close boundary object, like the examples I show you here, I activate Extrude and by adding a Z dimension, they are automatically converted to a solid. Ah, and there is also an option to extrude only the boundary here. I type EXT to activate Extrude again and before selecting anything, it says here, select objects to extrude or mold. I type MO to choose mold and the prompt asks me if I want to convert a close profile in a surface or a solid. I choose surface, type the shortcut SU, press enter, then I select the objects, add the height and I can realize they convert to surfaces. I'm going to rotate the workspace so you can see this better. You see, it's a surface. If you don't like this visual style because of the grids, I can change it to this one. Command press pull. This tool has a similar use, but there are few differences with extrude. First, it only works for closed boundaries. I'm going to activate the command and then, instead of clicking on the objects, I must click inside the area when it's highlighted. Second example. In this situation, there are two intersected rectangles. If I use press pull here, I can extrude the close boundary where my pointer is. Then I can do the same at this side. Look how beautiful it is. Using the command extrude here, I convert to a solid the wall polyline that I select. If I have an object inscribed inside another, sometimes I have to wait a bit to highlight both objects. Now click, if I want to extrude just this area. Union. This operation is quite easy to understand. Basically, it consists in merging intersect solids in a single one. For example, here I have a box and I'm going to make a cylinder intersecting it on this face. I find the midpoint of this edge to place the center of the circle. Then the cylinder height is going to be coincident with the top edge. Now. I click on the icon Union, on the Solid Editing tab. Then I just select both objects and press Enter. As you see, this is now a unique solid. This works not only for two solids, but also for several of them, like in this example. I select all and press Enter. Here you can see the result. Subtract. In this operation, basically, we remove part of a solid using another. Let's activate the command subtract. If we wait a few seconds, a label appears with instructions how to use the command. I find it quite clear. First, I select the object that I want to keep. Press Enter. Then. I click on the solid I want to subtract. The box here will disappear completely along with the intersected part between both objects. This tool can still be used for more than two solids. Here I want to subtract these two boxes. I reactivate the command, select the wedge, press enter, then I select the boxes. For this case, I want to have an empty space where the boxes are. Here I recommend to use Union first for the wedges. Then with Subtract, I select first a big solid, press Enter, 
then select the small ones and be sure you click when they are highlighted. Intersect. With this boolean operation we just keep the intersect part of two objects. Let's try it for this example. I click on the icon Intersect. Select both solids and press Enter. As you can see, everything here was erased except the intersect section. I can also use this tool when the surface intersects a solid like here. Now I can apply intersect here and check out the result. Ok, the original line is still here. 2D objects don't work in intersect. Important considerations. The Boolean operations union and subtract are only effective for solids. If I want to merge solids with 2D objects like a line it will not work. The same if I try to merge a solid and a surface. On the other hand, the operation intersect, I can use the solid and the surface, as I ex explained before. Ok, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to Cat in Black if you haven't done it yet. Just click in the icon that is shown here. Also, if you need online private lessons, you can send me an email to the address that I show you there. So, it's everything and see you next time!